How did the opportunity to create your own wine come about? Well, I, I'm not even from the wine region. My wife is, you know, and um, we met in Stellenbosch, uh, which is the wine region in South Africa. It's like our Napa Valley, a uh, most beautiful village, you know, with mountains and stuff and a lot of wine farms. Um, and at the same time as we met, you know, a good friend of mine, John Engelbrecht, his family, they've been making wine for, for, for 80 years now. And, um, you know, actually on his farm was our first date. You know, we went for a barbecue and we drank some wine and so on and became really close friends. And as time will go, you know, and, and I think in 1999 we decided for some reason, yeah, I like the Bordeaux uh, style wine. Um, so we made a wine. We said, okay, why don't we just slap your name on a bottle of wine and, um, and bottle some wine. I said, it's got to be good quality because um, you know you can only go with your name that far. And if people find out that your product is not good, they don't care if your name is whoever, you know, they're not going to buy it. So we needed to have a good product. And we only did, I think, only a thousand bottles um, was our first vintage, it was in 1999. Uh, bottled it, uh, really got good reviews. You know, Wine Spectator gave us over 90 in our very first year, which was wow. which was great. All of a sudden, we were we had the best, you know, red wine out of South Africa, and so it grew. You know, and um, bought a piece of land where we actually we use, we used to use these grapes in any case for our wines. The land became available, bought it, put the winery up. And you know now we've got seven other different labels, so um, it's kind of a kind of fell into it, you know, with with Liesel and, and good friends. Uh, still not, still don't know much about wine. I know what I like and dislike, sure. and I got a great winemaker, so uh, it's really going well. How would you describe your level of involvement in the whole process? Well, I'm a golfer, you know, and um, you know, my winemaker spent a lot of time in, in France, and that's why he knows so much about the Bordeaux blend. Um, but you, I, you've traveled the world enough, yeah. I would imagine, to know what you like. And well, exactly. Like. Sure. I, that's to where my extent goes, though. You know, I, I know what I like and not like. I'd like to, um, we, we're now making a, a Cabernet, we're doing a Merlot, uh, we're doing the, the Bordeaux blend. We got, we got two Bordeaux blends, one with a five varietal, and another one with six varietal, and we've actually come out with a Big Easy which is also a blend, and they're all in different classes. You know, you got the Ernie Els signature, which is the kind of the high-end, uh, uh, expensive wine, right down to the Big Easy, which is much more affordable, but they're all very drinkable. And um, I actually started to really fall in love with the Napa Valley uh, uh, type of uh, uh, grapes. Uh, you know, it's a lot more smoother. Um, you can actually drink it uh, you know, it's ready to drink when they bottle it, you know, unlike some other wines. So we'd, we'd like to go that, that route a little bit more. And this is coming from somebody who literally knows nothing about wine, but, uh, you know, it seems like you have the premium, uh, other premium brands out there. I've interviewed athletic figures for the series before who have associations with wine. It seems like a somewhat crowded field. So how do you distinguish yourself uh, among the others how challenging is that the, the great thing about wine is um, the better everybody else's wines are uh, you know the, the better for everybody because then you know people will take you more seriously when an athlete or a personality puts their name to a product you know it's not it's not just because of the name it's actually there's there's some sub substance to the product and um, you know Drew Bledsoe the, the quarterback, you know, he's into wine and he makes a, a wonderful wine. He actually came down to South Africa to our to our winery. Oh, really? And, um, you know, to come and taste some wines and stuff. We, you know, we exchange wines and stuff and he makes an unbelievable wine, you know. Um, so, I mean, there's obviously Greg Norman, there's um, Francis Ford Coppola. I mean, there's so many personalities who have uh, put their names to, to wines, but I would like to say that I would say 85 percent of them have really got uh, substance to their to their brands, and I think that's very important to keep the uh, to the level up. Once you know there's not a good product in there, people are not going to take you seriously.